Cracks and Bones Posted by Won't Think Straight The more stories I collect, the more I start to question what our reality actually is. Like Plato's allegory of the cave allegory of the cave, perhaps what we think of as real is nothing more than flickering shadows across a dim wall. Our minds try their best to piece together these echoes of reality with our limited senses, but the great world of truth lies beyond our reach and comprehension. But there are some of us who can, and do perceive reality very differently to rest of us. After reading my last two stories, my friend Steve spoke of one of these people his ex-girlfriend Christine. They had met at university where they attended the same psychology course. From the first time he saw her, he knew that she was special. She had an otherworldly quality to her, mixed with a strange intensity that he saw in few others. She was exceptionally bright almost inhumanly so, and it took several weeks of relentless courting before she relented to finally start dating him. It was months into their relationship that Steve was able to piece together why Christine was like no other person he had known. Christine was an individual with a rare form of synesthesia synesthesia, which gave her a very unique perspective on the world. She processed stimuli in a very different way her brain mixed up her senses so she could hear colors, smell sounds, or even taste numbers. She was a genius at mathematics because she could intuitively feel the right answers they would, taste, right to her. She had this ability for as long as she could remember. Growing up, she had assumed everyone could do it too. It was not until third grade when she asked her teacher why the school bell always smelled like oranges did she discover she was different. Her classmates would laugh at her and call her a freak. So she would avoid talking about her abilities and kept it secret throughout high school. Her synesthesia only got stronger as she got older. By the time high school ended, she had already decided to devote herself to the study of the human mind so she could learn more about herself. Steve was the first person since primary school that she had trusted enough to tell. She had loved the fact Steve was also a psychology major, and was just as intrigued as she was about her ability. They spent countless hours discussing how she experienced the world, which was so much richer and varied than he could imagine. She told him that the number one tasted like chocolate, three was cinnamon, six was garlic, and eight was cut grass. For her, doing multiplications, for example, was like cooking she could taste the result and know if the answer was right. It seemed as if she experienced a whole new other world that no one else sensed. The most intense of her sensations were for colors. Each color had a unique voice and personality that spoke to her especially when she touched it. Red was an old woman, kind and gentle, like a grandmother. Blue was angry and impatient, constantly rushing her. Green was stern and strict whilst yellow was proud and arrogant. Black was pure silence the absence of all sound. Her favorite was white seductive and passionate. She loved wearing white. There was one color she truly feared though dark gray. Even just a shade above black and she would start to hear whispers rising from the silence. A few shades lighter, and the voices would get louder. Evil voices, whispering in her ear, delighting in telling her how her skin would be flayed strip by strip from her conscious body, how her flesh would be devoured and torn from her bones while she was awake, how her eyeballs would be scooped from her skull so she could see a thousand pointed teeth tearing at her face. Needless to say, she hated nighttime and the dark. She had to always sleep with the lights on and with sleeping tablets so she wouldn't dream when her eyes were closed. When Steve and Christine moved in together, they found an old apartment in a nice neighborhood with white plaster walls all around. It was perfect for them close to the university and their work, very spacious and surprisingly affordable. Christine had loved the feel of it the moment she saw it, and Steve would have no complaints with how much friskier she was in this white apartment. Steve was careful to avoid any gray in the house. Each room was a different color to match its purpose. Their study desk was green and their kitchen was red. Their bedroom in particular was furnished in white, from the painted wardrobe to the white bed linen and the white carpet. 
Steve even took care with the lighting to avoid any shadows casting gray spots in the room. In their first week there, both had failed to attend any classes due to their extensive love-making sessions. It was after one of these particularly passionate sessions, while Steve lay asleep on the bed that Christine noticed a faint crack in the opposite wall. Against the stark white plaster, the thin gray line seemed to whisper imperceptibly to her from across the room. While it annoyed her, she decided to deal with it tomorrow as they had a lot of catching up with classes to do. She took her sleeping pills and drifted off to a dreamless slumber. For the next day, she had completely forgotten about the crack until she was in bed again staring at it. It became like an itch she couldn't scratch it became more noticeable because she knew it was there. It called and beckoned to her, whispering to her to get closer. The more she gazed at it, the wider and thicker the gray crack seemed to get. She nudged Steve, who reassured her she was imagining things. He assured her he would paint over the wall on the weekend if it bothered her that much. True to his word, Steve filled the hairline crack with plaster and painted over the wall twice. It didn't help. She could still hear the voice calling to her. Her strategy was to now avoid looking at the wall, to banish it by ignoring it. But in her mind, she could still see that crack, now the width of a thick pencil. She was sure that the last word she could hear repeatedly as she drifted to her medicated sleep was a ghostly, I'm here, e. and no more hiding. One night, she decided she could ignore it no longer, and had to face it. As she stared at the crack that went across the entire wall, she gasped as a bony finger started to poke out from its center and started to explore. She watched in mute horror as a second skeletal finger reached out from the gap and started feeling around the edges. She screamed so loud that Steve fell off the bed as he woke and pulled off his sleeping mask. Christine pointed at the empty wall, crying with teary eyes about a skeleton crawling behind there. Steve could see nothing, but no amount of consoling would convince her to spend another night in that room. She ended up staying over at a friend's place overnight, and refused to go back to the apartment until the wall was knocked down to prove she wasn't crazy. While Steve was hesitant to lose their bond by destroying a perfectly good wall to chase some ghosts, he weighed that up against losing a great apartment and his girlfriend. With great reluctance, he laid down some plastic on the floor and smashed a crowbar against the wall as Christine watched. Where there used to be a covered-up hairline crack, there was now a gaping hole that Steve started tearing at with his hands. With a quarter of the wall ripped, both Steve and Christine were stunned to find a crouching human skeleton, stuffed against the cavities and covered in cobwebs. They called the police to report their gruesome discovery. After extensive questioning, they were cleared of being suspects as the body had been there long before Steve and Christine were even born. In the decades past, the building had shady tenants and a very different neighborhood. A known crime hotspot, it was a slum area that had been slowly gentrified over the past few years, its history plastered and painted over until it was respectable. The skeleton was traced back to a missing persons case back from 1973. Reported as missing by her mother, the victim was a young prostitute with a petty criminal record a profile the police back then devoted precious few resources or sympathy to follow up. The police thought it was likely she was raped, murdered and walled up by one of the previous occupants, a notorious gang member who himself was killed in 1982 in a fight over money. The skeletal remains were eventually given a proper burial next to her long-deceased mother, a long-overdue reunion. Luckily for Steve, the apartment owner was also understanding enough to pay for the repairs to the wall given the circumstances. However, try as they might, the rest of their life couldn't return to normal for the couple. The ordeal gave Christine constant nightmares about skeletons breaking through the wall, despite the sleeping pills, nor would the voices stop tormenting her. She eventually had to turn to harder narcotics to find any release to escape from her reality. The pressures of completing a degree and caring for Christine's drug abuse put an unbearable strain on their relationship, and they broke off soon after. It was mentally too difficult for either of them to cope. 
Since then, Steve has been in and out of several relationships over the years. A few days ago, he decided to track down Christine again to get more details for this story. He ended up speaking with her parents. Christine continued to struggle with drug addiction for several years after their breakup. Chronically short of money, she was constantly on the move from place to place. Her last known location was a rundown motel, where she had skipped rent and left all her meager belongings behind. Her parents had tried to track her down, and even enlisted the help of a private investigator. Christine was eventually found a few months ago. The motel she had stayed at was being demolished to make way for new apartments. In her former room, behind a wall with a crack running across it, her skeletal remains were found, trapped between the dark gray concrete. 